Number one. So, how much for the girl? I've dealt with punks like this one before, but I've never been this desperate. It shows in my voice. Sorry lady, no can do. Come on, don't mess with me. How much? Anger spews from my throat. I won't risk losing the girl. She deserves better than to live the rest of her life rotting. Look, I told you, we ain't selling. Now take yourself home, old lady. My brow furrows. I keep pressing. Don't pretend there isn't a price. Just tell me what it is. I'll pay anything. How much for the girl? You really think she's special, huh? I nod. Well, here's the deal, lady. We are... Uh, we're about to shove off, and we're all set as is. So frankly, I think your best bet is to go walk the docks and try to find someone else. The girl isn't going anywhere. Capiche? I look at the girl. Pretty young thing just blossoming into a young woman. Beautiful. I know it'll be wrong if I take her back home with me. It wouldn't be right. But I can't help what I can't control. Look, there is no one else. Now would you please listen to me? Listen to reason for a minute. She's perfect. I love her. I want to take care of her. So, how much for the girl? Nah, we're done here. Forget you. Have a nice life, Granny. Oh, and stay safe. With numb eyes and a nauseous heart, I watched the boat begin its departure. The final evacuation from our quarantined, plague-soaked island. I'm so sorry, dear. I tried, but there was no room. I whisper between sobs, clutching my granddaughter in my arms. Number two. You know what sucks? Being the best in the world at something, and it being utterly unmarketable. I'm an incredible mime. I can fake climbing a rope like you wouldn't believe. But mimes don't rake in the cash like they used to. And busking is hard. On a good day, I might take in 30 bucks. No matter how many walls I'd walk into, or jump ropes I'd skip, my act just wasn't making money. I was going to lose my apartment. I'm crediting my desperation for me not noticing how creepy the man was. I guess when your diet mostly consists of 99 cent tacos, you don't think twice when you get offered magic gloves. But he said they'd make me put on my most memorable show ever. So I took them. The next day, I set down my money bucket, slipped on the gloves, hit the play button on my stereo and got to work. I started with the rope climb. Then, something amazing happened. As I closed my hands around the invisible rope, my fingers latched onto something solid. I could feel the rope in my hands. I gave it a strong pull. My feet came off the ground and I hung there dangling from a rope that wasn't there. It was incredible. And I was rewarded by the sound of clapping and applause. A small crowd had gathered, staring in wonder as I hung in mid-air. So I continued my show. I sat on chairs that weren't there, leaned impossibly against walls. I even rode an invisible bike through the ever-increasing crowd to uproarous cheers, and my money bucket was filled with cash. 
Then, I tried the classic, the invisible box. I crouched and stretched out my hands, feeling the walls around me. I faked hysterics as I pounded on the walls. The crowd loved it. I gave a flourish of my hands to the crowd and got up from my crouch. And my head slammed into the ceiling. I stifled a yell. The crowd laughed. I put my hands out and pushed on the invisible walls. But they wouldn't budge. I began to pound and kick and slam myself against the walls of my invisible prison. But nothing worked. I tried to take the gloves off but it was like they were fused to my skin. I gave up the mime act and yelled for help, but my mouth produced no sound. Then, the walls began moving inwards. I tried to brace myself against them as the box grew smaller and smaller. The crowd cheered loudly as I pushed with all my might, trying to stop the walls. Terrible advance, until I could feel it on every side, squeezing in on me like a vice. And, as my breath left me, and my bones cracked, and as the jubilant laughter of the crowd turned to terrified screams, I couldn't help but think that this was definitely my most memorable show ever. Number 3 a mother and her son are sitting on the couch one night when they start to get hungry. The mother decides to make some pancakes, a little midnight snack. But she finds that there isn't any pancake batter, none whatsoever. She remembers that there is a convenience store across the street from their apartment building, and it's still open. Her son is preoccupied with the television when she slips out the door and locks it. She knows that he will be scared all alone. He always cries when she leaves or lets go of his hand, and the thought breaks her heart, but she shakes her head. She will be quick. It takes her several minutes to buy some pancake batter and to get back. But when she opens the door, her son isn't crying or sobbing or hiding in the corner of the living room. He is sitting on the couch, the television is on, and there is a plate on the coffee table in front of him. She asks him about the food crumbs on his hands and the syrup running down his cheeks. He just stares at her a confused look. You made pancakes, he says. She finally notices the red lipstick on his left cheek, the shape of a kiss. Hello everyone, Sinister Chef here. I hope you enjoyed this collection of short scary stories. I would like to say a big thank you to the authors of these stories. A huge thanks to Lucky Number for the story How Much for the Girl, Loey for the story Mime Time, and Evan the Nerd 83 for the story Pancakes. Thank you for giving me permission to narrate your stories. You can find a link to their stories in the description box below. Remember, if you liked the story, then please leave a like and also subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment down below telling me which of these stories was your favourite. And, as always, stay sinister.